everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a RF tap attenuator and give you some of the formulas and talk a little bit about the different kinds. Uh, and uh, then after we get one all set to go, I'm going to go ahead and test it on the Nano VNA. So uh, should be a lot of fun. And oh, hey, do me a favor. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, it really helps me out to get those subscriber numbers up. And if you like the video, click on like, okay? Um, with that, let's get on with the show. Well, okay, I'm Stu AG6AG. Let's take a look at RF tap attenuators, shall we? There's really three basic kinds. Uh, the first one we got here is an air gap attenuator. And basically what you have going is you've got your uh, uh, signal going in one side, out the other side. That is the continue top to bottom right there. And then what you'll see is you'll see a slider for the other one that can be adjusted in and out. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to change the attenuation. Um, it's a little rough. You can't get it exact all the time, but uh, it is probably of the manufactured ones, one of the cheapest that you can buy. Uh, it also will give you the highest amount of attenuation. I mean, you can slide that thing so far out that you're getting 90, 100 dB attenuation. Uh, and uh, most of the equipment that I work with won't even look at that reliably. So, um, that said, it's a very simple design, and uh, it does very well, by the way, with uh, SWR going th from the through side. We'll talk a little about that uh, when we go into the testing portion of this. Now, uh, from there, we also... Now, this basically uses a transformer, just it's a wound uh, toroid that's wound around the main feed, and that is... picks picks it up basically like a transformer. So you get a nine to one or a 12 to one attenuation, things like that. Um, I, in experimentation, had made a few of these, um, wasn't that happy with them. Uh, they were a lot of work and, uh, you know, they just didn't seem to behave quite the way I thought they should. Uh, just me. Had issues also with, um, oh, uh, up, SWR and some other things, which didn't make any sense until I got a little bit, little bit further into it and began to understand that I wanted to keep the in and out as close as I could. Um, let's take a look at the third type, and this is the type that I want to start showing you right down here. Uh, what we have over here is we have a attenuator that basically just uses resistors, and you also see a little capacitor in there, and that little capacitor is there to uh, um, strip out any possible DC uh, voltage that might be on the uh, particular input of the radio. So, again, uh, fairly simple. This is probably, in my opinion, the easiest and the fastest one to make. It doesn't require special machining uh, to make that area slide over with the uh, uh, capacitive uh, gap one. Uh, the transformer one doesn't take all the windings and everything else. Um, really, all you have is you have uh, some resistor math that you have to do with it and uh, some soldering and, of course, a, a nice metal box, right? Because you don't want any of this RF leaking. So attenuation is measured typically in uh, decibels, and uh, we use dBm, um, which is uh, decibel... Uh, milliwatt ratings and numbers in order to calculate what our attenuation is. I'm not going to go deeply into um, decibels. There is some really great writing on how they work. Basically, it's a logarithmic formula that you use to be able to compare differences between different things uh, in workable and understandable numbers that are easy to use, okay, and compare to. Uh, some of the cool things about decibels is that um, 
if you have 50 decibels and add 30 or add 3, let's say, uh, the net result is going to be fine in your mathematic formula even if you only had 40 decibels and added 3. Um, again, you can see why I'm not trying to explain this because it's kind of a complicated concept for something that seems like it should be so easy. And this was something that I actually uh, really had to work at understanding when I took my technician license class. So, uh, you know, it was, it was difficult. And to get, uh, to get an understanding of it, I actually, I finally did after running the mathematical formulas on different scenarios, because that's the best way I learn. I recommend you do the same thing. What I have up here on the screen uh, is a quick explanation by some very, very intelligent gentlemen. This is a lead-in to the tutorial for decibels um, on the ARL uh, website. This is a PDF. And uh, down at the bottom in yellow is the link. Sorry for all the percents and all that stuff, but they have uh, lots of uh, spaces and other things in the document name that require that in order to get it off the web. Um, I do recommend easiest way to find information on decibels and the mathematics is to go ahead and do a search on uh, calculating decibels or what is the decibel scale. And there's lots of really, really good information. All right. Now, with that, we should uh, take a look at decibels in uh, DBM, which is what we'll be talking about. And what I have here is a table that takes uh, 0 dBm uh, is basically 1 milliwatt, okay, or 0 0.001 watt. So if I was going to list, let's say, my radio's output power, I could do it in decibels very easily by looking at this chart. Uh, and um, in my case... We're going to be hooking to a HF radio. That's what I wanted this attenuator for. Um, and uh, that has a maximum wattage output of 100 watts. So what am I trying to do, though? How low do I want to get my signal on that attenuated output when I, you know, before I hook it to a scope or a spectrum analyzer or something like that? And I use the basis that... Um, my spectrum analyzer uh, does not want to see more than 100 milliwatts. It says you put more than 100 milliwatts in it and it's going to go pop. Uh, so I use the rule that I don't want to increase more than 10 dB uh, across the board on what signal is getting in to the system, right? So if it will handle 20 dB, which is 100 milliwatts, I want to make sure that everything I put into it is under 10 milliwatts. So how would I do that? Well, remember, the logarithmic scale that dBm is allows us to say, all right, so I have 50 dBm. If I take away 10 dBm, that would leave me 40 dBm. So on the other side of it, if I attenuate it 40 dBm, then I am only going to have an output between 0 and 10, between 10 watts and 100 watts, right? I hope that all makes sense. I'm, I'm doing my best to try to explain it. Um, so the tap that I decided to go with is a simple uh, resistance tap works very well. Basically, you have the input and the output up at the top there, across the top. And then you have, down at the bottom, you have the uh, tap port, right? Um, and we basically have two different resistance values in the mix and one capacitor. And again, uh, I give the specifications over, whoop, that way, I give the specifications over on the uh, uh, side there. Uh, that R1 is a total resistive value of uh, 2460 ohms, and R2 is a total resistive value of 50 ohms. And, of course, the uh, cap is going to be 0 0.1 uh, uh, microohms or microfarads. Um, and that is basically the only reason the capacitor is even in there, like I said before, is just to strip out any stray DC voltage that may make it into this box, right? 
So how did I come to uh, the formulas here? How did I come to what my resistance value should be for R1? Well, there is a formula that allows me to do that, but for our purposes here, I just want to uh, show you if I want to attenuate 20 dB, I'd need 280 ohm resistance for R1. Uh, 30 dB, I'd need uh, 820 ohms resistance for R1. Uh, for uh, 40 dB, which is my target, I need 2460 ohms is what we have specified over in the diagram over here. Okay, um, R2 values, 50 ohms. Now, I've been told that that can be anywhere as long as it's uh, one-tenth of the R1 value, theoretically. Um, I use 50 ohms just in case there's nothing attached to it. It's going to show like a 50 ohm device. But we're going to get into a little bit of that math here in a minute. Um, now, as far as the formulas go, in order to calculate out what resistance value uh, is going to provide as far as a drop in dBm, all I do is I take uh, the log of R1 divided by R2, multiply it by 20, and that will give me my drop in dBm of the resistors that I'm using. Um, and from there, actually, I can uh, calculate out what the wattage is, uh, or excuse me, the voltage uh, is for the uh, watts that I'm putting into the system, which allows me to calculate out uh, what voltage, uh, or excuse me, how many watts are required for the total resistance of R1, right? Because, uh, you know, I'm putting 100 watts in this thing. Mathematically, what do I got to ensure that I get right here on, uh, you know, my resistors, that I don't burn up my resistors? Um, I'll get it out front, too, that the capacitor... The voltage is so, so, so very low by the time it hits this capacitor based on R1 that the concern of what the voltage specification is on the capacitor, my goodness, I, I used 50 volt, a 50 volt capacitor and that was more than fine. Uh, so that in itself wasn't a problem. Um, now, when we build the filter, okay, uh, I'm going to put a parts list down below of what I used. Uh, I used a bunch of 820 ohm resistors and some 100 ohm resistors that were all 2 watt. And like I said, I had a, 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 a 0.1 uh, uh, microfarad um capacitor seen around that I just grabbed to toss in there and it worked fine. Uh, like I said, it, there's not a lot of voltage there. And all it's really doing is making sure that I don't have any DC voltage going into my test equipment, which for me is a is the big requirement. Um, so with that, let's once more take a look at our formula here. Okay. So again, R1 is going to be 2460 ohms and R2 is going to be 50 ohms and of course the um, 0.1 uh, microfarad is going to be the uh, capacitor all right now here's the filter I built okay this is the attenuator right here and uh, let's talk about what we have. Basically, we have the straight through being connected with a very, very small piece of 14 gauge uh, single, uh, single or uh, uh, non-stranded wire. And then I have a ground going across just to reduce the, uh, um, any kind of resistance that may be on the uh, uh, common side. And here, if we look, these three resistors, three 820 ohm resistors, make up my 2460 ohm uh, section of the attenuator. And down here, I have 200 ohm resistors, and those 200 ohm resistors in parallel come out to 50 ohms. Okay, so we've got that taken care of. Uh, now, something interesting though, your test equipment 
may or may not have a 50 ohm termination. So uh, if you're hooking to a scope, that's high impedance. Uh, and the way this is designed is for 50 ohms. So I need to calculate out my R2 value a little bit different because uh, if I'm hooking to my um, spectrum analyzer, it is uh, it has a impedance of 50 ohms right there on it. So I need to combine the 50 ohms of R2 with the 50 ohms of the um, oh, uh, spectrum analyzer uh, as an additional resistor in uh, parallel. That means that my R2 value is actually only 25 ohms. That's okay, all right? That's by design. Uh, and we can calculate all that out into our formula here. Um, so if I put all those numbers in the formula, like the one that we had earlier in here, you can see that I am at 39.86 dBm, 40 dB. Anyway, so this checks out, at least mathematically. And, oh, by the way, here is the calculation for what I actually need for watts for my resistors. And I need a total of a little over 2 watts. Well, um, R1, right, what I'm calculating against is 2 watts plus 2 watts plus 2 watts, right? Because I have three resistors in series. That gives me a total wattage there of 6 watts. So I have enough ability uh, for the power that I'm going to be running through this that I shouldn't burn up these resistors. All right? So that takes us to, there you go my 40 dB attenuator. Now, you know me, I don't trust anything, and I certainly don't trust this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn around. I am going to go ahead and hook up the Nano VNA to test this thing real quick, just to make sure it's safe to put on my test equipment. We'll be right back with that. All right, so I've got my 40, minus 40 dB uh, RF tap hooked to my nano VNA. My port 1 or port 0, depending on what model you have, is going into my uh, uh, through on the attenuator, coming out now to a regular old dummy load. And then... The attenuated uh, signal is going into my port 2 for the S21 reading. Um, and let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up for a shot here and hopefully get it clean enough that you can actually see some of uh, what we're talking about here on the VNA. All right. So you know what? We're, uh, we're zoomed in here, and now we can take a look at what our settings actually are, what our readings are. And uh, I'm sitting right here. Uh, oh, you know, let's uh, let's take our little cursor up. Let's take it up to. I'm looking. Let's take it up to where it's right on at 40 dB down, which is right about there. I'm at about oh 75 uh, megahertz. That's not too bad. And my SWR is one to 1.04. That's one to one. Um, now, I'm running a really, really, really broad uh, frequency range here. I'm down at 550 uh, kilohertz and going all the way up to 300 kilohertz. And I'm not seeing anything I don't really expect. Um, something to remember also on this little device is that, um, eh, you know, the dB loss may not necessarily be that accurate. It's plus or minus probably two or three. Um, I do have a uh, tracking generator and a um, uh, oh, uh, spectrum analyzer that I can hook up and really test this thing right. And maybe we'll show that in a future video. Uh, but really, I would not be concerned. I think that uh, coming out of this tap, 
we're basically looking at a minus 40 dB attenuation, uh, which works within the realm of design. So I'm happy with that, at least a little happy with that. Uh, so with all that, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, project done, at least for now. Um, a couple things to remember. Look, we're allowed to experiment because we're amateur radio operators and everything that you do, everything that you play with, everything that you hook to your radio, everything you hook to your test equipment, there is a chance that you could let the smoke out of the box as it were and, you know, have to go get it repaired or heaven forbid, figure out a way to repair it yourself or whatever it takes. Um, so just be aware of that. I mean, um, this is great, and I'm enjoying doing all these tests. I'm enjoying sharing it with you. But just be aware, you could break something while you're doing this stuff. Now, what we just did here, building the attenuator, that's good protection, and it's cheap insurance, okay? Uh, so all the parts that I used for it are down in the bottom, down in the description. So uh, should give you a good parts list, even with links to Amazon Prime, okay? With that... Well, let's go ahead and let uh, me finish this up at a later time. Well, there you go. Tried to give you all the basic formulas. Tried to give you a little primer on uh, decibels and uh, calculations, things like that. Um, I guess looking back on the video, uh, I should probably insert here. Decibels are kind of like a Richter scale. Okay, um, a little change or a lot of change can be represented by a very little number. Um, and it doesn't necessarily look at the total amount of power. Okay, what it looks at is it looks at the change of power or percentage of change. A great example is you add, let's say you've got 50 dB, right, which is what? That's 100 watts. Let's say that you double that to 200 watts. Well, yeah, 200 watts is only 53 dB. See, there's a very little difference in that number, but a great change in the value. I hope that helped, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hey, do me a favor. Make sure you click subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And uh, if you like my video, click like. Any questions that you might have about this video, um, please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Uh, and if you'd like to make a comment, I love to get them. Uh, we try to answer all the questions within a couple days. So uh, I really do pay attention to this stuff. And I, I, I hope that this stuff is helping you guys out. Anyway, with that, I'm Stu, AG6AG. Thanks for joining me, huh?